Chapter 14 of the Story of Geronimo. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Arctic Sun. The Story of Geronimo by Jim Kajelgard. Chapter 14 Chief Grey Wolf. Rumor prowled like a hunting mountain lion over the foothills of the Sierra Madres. It crept up the canyons, climbed the peaks, searched out every Apache camp, and came to Geronimo. He surrounded his camp with scouts. The sun was four hours high when one of the scouts imitated the call of a jay. Geronimo did not stir. A jay's call meant that a friend came. A hawk's scream indicated an enemy. Ten minutes later, Woe rode into Geronimo's camp. The huge chief of the Nedni was sweating, and Geronimo hid his wonder. He had known Woe for many years, and had fought with him when the Kas Kai Ya massacre was avenged. This was the first time he had seen his friend show fear. Have you heard? Woe demanded. Geronimo replied, It has come to my ears that Chief Grey Wolf is in the Sierra Madres. He is, Woe exclaimed. He held up both hands with all fingers spread. Ten times this many warriors he leads, and ten times again, and twice again. The word is that he comes in peace, and only to ask Apaches to return to the reservation in Arizona. Benito believed him, and let his band surrender in peace. Grey Wolf's soldiers shot the men. They cut the throats of the women and children. For a moment, Geronimo remained silent. Ten times ten, and ten times a hundred, and twice a thousand. Not even Chief Grey Wolf, known to the white men as General George Crook, could lead two thousand soldiers into the Sierra Madres unobserved. Nor was General Crook a white chief who said one thing but meant another. He kept his promises, and he would not massacre prisoners. But it would not be well for even Geronimo to give woe the lie. Finally Geronimo asks, This you saw? This I saw, said woe. You saw it with your own eyes, Geronimo asked. Not with my own eyes, woe admitted. One of my warriors saw. Name him, Geronimo said. It was not really one of my warriors, woe said. A warrior from Nechi's camp, or Zeli's, or Loco's saw. He told my warrior. Geronimo said, I would live in Arizona again, if I could live as befits an Apache. I would even live on the reservation, but not on the Gila River flats. You would put yourself in the white man's power? Woe asked unbelievingly. Geronimo said, I put myself in no man's power, but if I might once more live in Arizona, I would keep peace with the white man and let him go his way if he kept peace and let me go mine. You speak madness, Woe gasped. I speak no madness, said Geronimo, and I do not think that even Chief Grey Wolf can catch me now that I know that he is here. We saw you coming. As you shall see me go, Woe promised. I have ridden this far to ask you to go with us. Whither? Far to the south, where no white soldier has ever been, or ever shall be, Woe said. Geronimo said, I do not think I would like the south. I say no more, said Woe. Woe caught his pony and rode away. Geronimo knew a great sorrow. Woe was frightened, because he feared he was willing to see through the eyes of others rather than find out for himself how things truly were. It was indeed a sad thing. Two days later, the scout announced another friend. In twenty minutes, Anna, Benito's wife, climbed the hill to Geronimo's camp. Why are you here? Geronimo demanded. I bear a message from Chief Grey Wolf, said Anna. Geronimo said, it has come to my ears that Chief Grey Wolf killed all the followers of Benito. Yet you, Benito's wife, are not dead. We did indeed fight some of Chief Grey Wolf's Apache scouts, said Anna. They were commanded by the white chiefs, Crawford and Gatewood. They surprised us in our camp, and we thought they came for war. But they came for peace, 
and though they killed a few of us because we fought them, they took most of us prisoner and treated us very well. The men remain prisoners, but the children have freedom of Chief Grey Wolf's camp, and all women have been sent forth with the message Chief Grey Wolf has for all Apaches. This is why I am here. And what is this message? Geronimo asked. Return to Arizona and live in peace. Geronimo asked, Was Chato in Benito's camp when Grey Wolf's scouts came? Chato was there, Anna said. And what says Chato to the message? Chato and Benito have agreed to return, said Anna. So have Zeli and Naichi. I know not of the others. She lies, Francisco warned. Geronimo said, Women do not lie about their husbands. Would Chief Grey Wolf speak with me? He would, said Anna. Where? Anna used a stick to trace a map on the ground. Geronimo studied it rubbed it out with his moccasin, and nodded. Eat and rest, he told Anna, then go to Chief Grey Wolf and say Geronimo will come in four days. In four days, carrying his Winchester, repeating rifle, and wearing a belt full of bullets, Geronimo approached the meeting place an hour after sunrise. He looked straight ahead only, for anything else might betray him. His warriors, who had left camp while night still held, were hidden all about, but they were to attack only if there was treachery. Geronimo saw Captain Crawford and Lieutenant Gatewood, army officers whose deeds had earned them the respect of all Apaches. There was Al Sieber, famed chief of scouts, and one of the very few white men who could think like an Apache. Mickey Free, whom Cochise had been accused of kidnapping years before, stood ready to tell Geronimo and General Crook what each said to the other. Geronimo spoke Apache, Spanish, and some English. General Crook spoke and understood English only. Proud and haughty as the Apache himself, every inch the warrior, General Crook's eyes met Geronimo's. They did not look away. Geronimo asked, What would you talk about? Your return to Arizona, said General Crook. Geronimo said, You think I will live again on the hot flats of the Gila? It was not I who sent you there, said General Crook. Choose your home. There are the White Mountains. A mighty yearning stirred in Geronimo's heart. He was homesick for Arizona and the White Mountains. What else do you ask? Geronimo inquired. General Crook said, Your promise to live in peace. Who promises me that the white man will also keep the peace? Geronimo asked. I do, said General Crook. And have you known me to lie? I have never known Chief Grey Wolf to speak falsely, Geronimo admitted, and I see no treachery here. Humor lightened General Crook's eyes. How many of your warriors surround us, Geronimo? Do you think I came in fear? Geronimo asked angrily. I did not say that said General Crook. I asked how many of your warriors surround us. Some, Geronimo admitted, but they are to shoot only if you start a battle. See for yourself that we want no battle, General Crook said. Will you come back to live on the Apache Reservation, if you may choose your home in the White Mountains? I will, if I may do that, Geronimo said. Will you live in peace? Geronimo promised, I will live in peace. When will you come? General Crook asked. When I am ready. Geronimo turned on his heel and strode away. End of chapter 14. Recording by Arctic Sun, Anchorage, Alaska. Jeremy C. Wadkins at Hotmail.com.